So, Brad. Yeah, buddy. You live in Macon, Georgia. I do not, but okay. I can't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for my purposes. Okay. You live in Macon, Georgia. You, for whatever reason, are a fan of the state of Georgia. Just all sports. Mm-hmm. On Saturday night, your Georgia Bulldogs go to Tuscaloosa to take on the hated Alabama Crimson Tide at, at 8.30 kickoff. Mm-hmm. However, you also have first pitch of game six, because it's going to go to game six, between the Braves and the Dodgers, first pitch at 8.30 p.m. Isn't that the most Atlanta thing that can possibly happen in 2020? The Braves have a chance to go to the World Series. Alabama and Georgia are playing at the exact same time. No, the most Atlanta thing is neither one of them will win a championship. Ah. You know, Early, sometimes them football boosters will provide your family with a car or even house if you keep nice and quiet about it. They're going to do what now? Welcome to the place where if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying is a way of life. Just keep it down home, guys. Where degenerate gamblers can congregate in peace. Money, money, yeah, yeah. Money, money, yeah, yeah. Where screaming at 20-year-old kids on TV is just another Saturday. Every fiber in your ball, and you take it, and you beat the piss out of them. I'm talking about beat the piss out of them. Let's go whip their ass. Let's go. Where game days don't end until the Rainbow Warriors say so. Look out, Purdy. Oh, what is he doing? What is Brock Purdy doing? They are the bag men that Danny Sheridan never found. I'm a damn with a strong ass offer. And it all comes to you with a splash of bourbon on the side. Woo! This is the Friends of the Program podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the Friends of the Program podcast. I'm Brad. He's Drew. As we get set to talk about an insane week of college football last week, where apparently no one knows how to play defense anymore. Um, totally optional across the country. Sorry for ragging on you, Big Twelve, about not playing defense because the SEC now has forgotten how to it, do it. It came too. back in in full. I'm quietly desperate for Big Ten crappy football just to see scores under 30 points right now, which is, yeah. Mark D'Antonio is just upset. He's uh, it, just mad. It, it bought, he's retired and he's angry. Okay? Yeah. That's Mark D'Antonio right now. Yeah. Um, but we'll get onto all that in just a second. We also got some big breaking news today. We're recording on Wednesday. Wednesday, a lot of stuff has happened today, so we're going to talk, recap all that, and then kind of preview the week. There's not a whole lot happening this week except for – One really big game um, in Tuscaloosa. Otherwise, it's a pretty quiet week on the college football front coming up. Drew, how you doing, man? Doing good. Um, Still a little bit uh, exhausted after uh, what we we said would be a crazy weekend um, of college football. And was it ever? Um, Top to bottom, man. I, I mean, there really wasn't a chance for you to catch your breath until finally Clemson, um, the Clemson and Miami kicked off, and then you sort of got to catch your breath just because Clemson was not bored, yeah. uh, which is which is their pitfall. Um, on the opposite side, you had Bama and Ole Miss going toe to toe, going at the same yeah, exact time, <laughs> exactly. So a game that we all went well, that'll be fun to watch until Alabama stretches their legs. They never really stretch their legs until about four minutes to go in the game. Now, nah. um, what are you drinking tonight, buddy? Uh, that would be, uh, seeing as how last weekend was a rare, really good weekend, we're going to go with the Eagle Rare. Uh, oh, nice. Just a solid, uh, it, this is my, it, Woodford was my bar. I think Eagle Rare is making a push to make it the bar. Oh, for like the go-to? For, for the go-to. Got um, it. For the, for the, oh, you have anything less than that? Yeah, no. I'm, I'm quite all right because I've, I've become a high price to war when it comes to bourbon. So I have gone decidedly less because when you don't play defense, <laughs> you don't deserve no, good stuff the, in my winner, world. Loser, people that don't play defense yeah. don't get blamed. And, and when um, Auburn and when Auburn needs a field goal and a backwards fumble that was somehow ruled an incompletion to win a football game, you that's know that's this gets Singleton Scotch, which I bought a couple of years ago. It's at the store. It had decent ratings. It was yeah. relatively cheap. I was like, all right, we'll give this a yeah, shot. Sure. Whatever. It's still sitting in my cabinet several years later because it's uh-huh. not very good folks. I'm uh-huh. not going to recommend you to go buy this. And I love Scotch. You are a Scotchy Scotch guy. I do like my Scotch. Mm-hmm. This is not Down good. into the belly. No, no that's don't, not. 
don't go buy it. But I'm going to choke it down and we'll see what happens. You need to make room for something else. So we got to start. We've already said there was no defense last week. And we got to start at the epitome of no defense in Oxford, Mississippi. Because I thought we thought it might be a fun game. You know, Bama was a 21-point favorite. We're like, yeah, this could be 14, but, you know, a little bit. What the hell did we see? Because my favorite stat that has come out of that game is the, fact, that. is the fact that Ole Miss only stopped like 40 yards the entire day. As in all the yards, yards they, they could have prevented. When Alabama had the football, they stopped 41 yards from being gained by Alabama. A punt from the Ole Miss 40 and, and Najee, ha- ha- Najee Harris fumbling on the one-yard line. That's the, a- the only things that stopped Alabama from doing whatever they wanted on offense. <laughs> now, that said, Alabama's defense wasn't much better. No. No. Ole Miss was blowing the line off the ball. Which was the most shocking thing to me. Yeah, in fact, my wife and I were watching the game, and I kept going, I can't believe I'm watching this. I can't believe I'm seeing this. Um, I, I heard an Alabama uh, beat writer say, is this really a Nick Saban defense that I'm watching, or is this? am I going back to 2004 and 2003 Alabama? Um, and, he, and he's right. I, I get what that sounds like from an Alabama fan, and it upset me because, of course, what it really? Um, but, but it really was. It, it, it was. it was shocking to watch. And my favorite excuse, which came off as such sour grapes from Alabama, uh, you won the game by two touchdowns uh, right around, d- double-digit points. Did anybody with really you win that game, though? Uh, no, Alabama was the less losing. Besides, besides people who just want to watch crazy football. Oh. Because yeah, that was yeah. insane to watch. I won. I won on that end. Oh, um, yeah. When you get the halftime prop bet of Ole Miss over 35 and they're already oh, at 21, that was just bring yeah, it. Yeah. Give me the money. Bring um, it. <laughs> but the the best line so far was, well, Lane Kiffin was obviously stealing our defensive sides. You, you understand that he lines up before you make your defensive calls, right? He hasn't been there in four years. And if you haven't changed your offensive or, or your defensive signals, signals yeah, in four years? Yeah. Because remember, Jeremy Pruitt was there as the defensive coordinator when Lane was there. So... And apparently they're on a text message chain together, along, yeah, exactly. with, along with Kirby. Uh, yeah, along yeah. with all of Saban's other kids. That, that's amazing, by the way. I want to read that text chain in the worst Oh, my way. God. That means that's <laughs> a Saturday Night Live skit waiting to happen. But I, I just – there is so much of me that sees Nick Saban playing this kind of football. It goes back 10 years. Mm-hmm. And he said the quote, is this what we want football to be? when the hurry-up was being introduced by Malzahn. Yep. And he was getting beat in, 20, in 2009, 2010. He was struggling with it in, mm-hmm. against that, yeah. that offense. And now it's a full embrace to hell with defense. I, it makes me scared to say what I'm about to say, but Georgia's got a live shot this week. I know we're going to yeah. talk more later. Yeah. No, but they're, you're, they're the only team right. I see playing any defense in the country right now. At all. Maybe Kentucky a little? A little? A little. A little. Because um, Kentucky the, held Ole Miss to fewer points than Alabama did. Let that sink in. Let that let that just roll around in the noodle for a second. No, you're not wrong. Uh, and we will talk about it a little bit later on. Um, because I know Alabama would love for this to get into a shootout situation because of that offense. I don't know if that's the right call. I don't know if they can. We'll find out, though. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll talk – obviously, we'll talk more Bama-Georgia later. It's a, it's the biggest game of the weekend. Quite frankly, it's the only really, really big game this weekend, and we're yeah. going to go in-depth on it towards the end of the show as we do our picks. Other games from last week that we have just got to go over, um, and I'm, this is in no particular order, folks. They're just coming off the top of my head. Let's start in College Station, 11 a.m. kickoff, where Texas A&M gets – 
their biggest win under Jimbo? Maybe it's bigger than the LSU win a couple of years ago. It, it is. It absolutely is. Yeah. Um, no, this is this is the signature win that Jimbo had to have at some point this season, um, in my opinion. If not, not to say that he's on a hot seat or anything like that, but the seat would get warm if he just beat who he was supposed to be and lose to lose to who he was supposed to lose to. Um, I think Gus Malzahn's going to find that out this year. Um, he, uh, I don't think Gus gets let go unless no. things just go super sideways, which they could. But I, even then, I, I think it would take something pretty drastic. Um, but no, Jimbo had to have something like this happen um, this year just to show that there's progress in the program. Um, and I, I remember texting you, Brad, um, during the game and kept saying, here's where they fall apart. This I thought so. Where it happens. I, I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, and even, even with the falling apart, they still righted the ship and were able to get a win, a huge win, and something that I didn't think Kellerman could do. Yeah, no, that's the biggest thing for me is Florida made Kellen Mon look like a world beater Saturday. Yeah. I, Florida's defenses. We just talked about Bama and Ole Miss's defense being bad. Florida's defense has been bad all season now. Yeah. They have, they're not very solid. Which, and had we not had the postponement with COVID this week with LSU, you couldn't have given me enough points for the over at no. that game at the Swamp this coming Saturday. But now that's not off till December. Yeah, which I don't think will help much. It'll no. help a little, but I don't think it helps much. I, uh, I tell you, Drew, that noon window, noon Eastern window mm-hmm. Saturday was one of the most bizarre, insane, channel-flicking windows you have ever seen. Because yeah. you had the game we just talked about, A&M mm-hmm. and Florida with the upset there. Missouri and LSU. Oh, oh. Where Mizzou goes up and down the field, gets an unbelievable stop. goal line stand. Oh my gosh. Well, four shots from the one for LSU, and they couldn't get it in at the end yeah. of the ball. Like, fantastic game up there. At the same time, you got a wildly entertaining game in Chapel Hill. Yeah. Where every time you turned around, North Carolina was up 21, 24 points. And then about five minutes later, it's a one score ball game again. With yeah. Virginia. Oh, you never gave up on that game, man. I, I threw that one to the curb. I ended and up then, 56-45. Like, yeah, that was a great game. Oh, oh, and by the way, you got the Red River shootout. I'm not oh. calling it the showdown. I'm not calling it the rivalry. It's no, the freaking it's Red shootout. River shootout. I don't it's care. A shootout. I don't Much care. like what happens in Jacksonville every year is the cocktail party. It's a party. cocktail party. We're not changing these things. No. But the Red River shootout goes to four overtimes for the first time in history. Yeah. Where Texas once again comes back from two scores down late in the ball game, and then this time they found a way to lose the game. In Twice OT. because weren't they down seventeen to nothing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an insane three and a half to four hours of football. No, I was exhausted after those games, and then we had to deal with uh, Tennessee, Georgia, with Jeremy Pruitt looking like a Maruska doll. Okay, um, okay. I'm going to get somewhat politically incorrect here. The man looks like an uncircumcised checkered penis with that thing pulled up over his head like that. I'm sorry. It just Mm -hmm. does. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. (laughs) Um, And I think my favorite thing from the weekend was, since I live in Tennessee, was going into work on Monday and people going, well, it was a tale of two halves. No, no, it wasn't. Mm Mm-mm. No, it was not. You led at the half 20 to seven, or 21 to 17. However, a fumble in their own end zone that you recovered for a touchdown and a fumble and a going forward on fourth down, which I still don't really understand how Georgia could false yeah. start and Tennessee can decline it. But anyway, uh, and a one play drive for a touchdown. And then you actually making a drive and scoring a touchdown, which good on you, uh, does not a half of football make. Um, because literally those are the scoring plays for Tennessee. To get Georgia played. dominated that game top to bottom. Georgia finished that game from top to bottom. They were given 14 points. So take away those 14, they've got seven points. What did Auburn do? Two field goals. Yeah. Looks about the same to me. But at which that was an absolute domination in its own right. This was just a little bit less of a domination, but still a domination. 
when Georgia turned the screws to him in the second half, it was all over. Now, but granted, George- I wasn't paying too close of attention no. to that because Auburn was busy trying to hump a doorknob. I, yeah, I don't even know what the hell that was on Saturday. Um, I, I honestly have no words for what I saw other than Arkansas got screwed. Yeah, no, and I apologize to, to any Arkansas fan because – You got screwed. We're not we're – not, uh, the one thing that you'll find out as is, is we continue to learn about each other um, is that we're two of the more real – Auburn fans to where we're not going to go, well, that's just the referee's call and this is what we do. No, no. no. Arkansas got screwed. um, And I I feel badly about it and for it. um, But there's nothing I can do about it. Um, And I I guess I'll take the win. If you think I celebrated for one second Saturday, you'd lost your damn mind. No, no. This is is an Auburn team that is not a very good football team. Um, No. In fact, I was talking to a friend, a mutual friend of ours um, earlier today, and I said, this is where I am with this Auburn football team. I'm not doing my Sunday rewatch because why would I rewatch something that I know is not going to get fixed or is yeah. somewhat fixable? And it's not the player's fault. It's not uh, – it's a talent deficiency on the line that falls on one man, technically one and a half man, but one man's real head. Uh, and it's not, it's one guy that's on the staff and then one guy that is hopefully in a home by now, uh, maybe <laughs> Grimes, um, just because why would you, one, why would you expect that JB Grimes is going to go out and recruit offensive linemen like he needed to against the likes of Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, Jeremy Pruitt, other guys that have gotten these lines, uh, you can throw in, um, Dan Mullen down in Florida and, and Gus Malzahn for roster management. This yeah. is this is squarely on his head, um, and sadly, Auburn won't hold his feet to the fire because they can't afford to. Yeah, that was absolutely pitiful football to watch, but it, it just goes to show, though, back to the other opinion, because the other game in that afternoon window that I was 100% glued to was Boston College and Pitt. Yeah. That yeah. game was fantastic. That I did not see that one coming. Um Money line. Man, Man, that was good. I had – if you guys didn't see this game, 24-24 late – or no, it was 24-21 to late. Sorry, Boston College was up 10, 24-14, gave up a touchdown. Pitt gets the ball back. Less than a minute to go. Kicker comes in and drills a 58-yarder. Just smoked it right down the middle. So we're going to overtime. Pitt's got all the momentum. Boston College scores, gets their extra point. Pitt comes back, scores. Same guy who drilled a 58-yarder, wide right. Ball oh. game over, BC wins. That game was fantastic to watch. That and was a heck of a Maybe ball. my favorite game of the weekend, to be honest with you. Woo! Yeah. Strong. Well, because they actually played some defense, like it made me feel good inside. You know, mm-hmm. you had to earn points instead of just yep. going, I have the That's football, true. I'm going to run. Yeah, <laughs> like you got to see it at 7 o'clock last Saturday. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I thought that game was just a ton of fun and underrated. Like it yeah. felt like everybody was paying attention to either the Auburn game with a potential upset or the Georgia game for the domination. And meanwhile, Pitt and BC over here doing their thing and doing it well. Like I had a blast watching that football game. No, it, it, it the first two windows uh, for a multitude of games were really, really good. Uh, and then we kind of slowed down once we got to the night, per se, because how can you really slow down when both teams have, what what was it, 1,200 yards of offense? I know they went over 100 on the over-under. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but it wasn't the game that we thought it would be. Uh, yeah. We knew that uh, – I think we all knew that Clemson would take down Miami. That, yeah. that was pretty much – That was closer than I thought it would be. Or, I'm sorry, bigger than I thought it would be. You and I uh, both had yeah. it. You and I yeah, both have- that's true. That's true. I, but in my, whenever I break down a game, I always ask four questions. Can I see this team winning big? Can I see this team winning close? And whoever has the most, that's normally who I go with. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a method that pretty much hits for me almost all the time. I saw Clemson winning big. I saw Clemson winning close. I saw Miami winning close. And it just turned out that, Miami, uh, that Clemson winning big was what happened. So uh, not shocked by the result. I'm 
I'm I'm scared uh, that Miami's offense couldn't do more. Yeah. Um, because that means that somebody else is playing defense. We just can't see it because we don't know how good the ACC really is after Clemson and Miami uh, and Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame's better Notre than Dame. Miami. I, I yeah. and and Clemson does go to Notre Dame later this year. Yes. I, However, I I know that result. I give me Clemson at whatever point total. The game's in November. It might be a little cold. Give me, I, going ahead and uh, jot this down in your notes. Uh, Drew takes Clemson and whatever the spread is. Okay, Notre Dame's offense can play. I'm, I'm, I, I'm not, not saying that they can't. I'm still not 100 percent sold on Clemson being that great this year. I know they've got talent everywhere. I'm just not completely sold yet. And I liked. And sold. granted, I also like what I saw to Florida State the other night. They played pretty well yeah, for a while no. against Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I don't like that Florida State found an offense. Yeah, like and, and we're going to talk about them later. They're in our picks yeah. this week. Yeah, that's um, an interesting game. But I thought Notre Dame. I still think the first after that first game, they they struggled against Duke. But mm-hmm. since then, they've been on cruise control, man. Yeah. They're moving no. the ball up, especially their offense. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, and um, it's it it's going to be a very interesting ball game. Um, between Notre Dame and Clemson, that's the next time Clemson's going to be talked about, really, because they played Georgia Tech this weekend. I think they're a 27 point favorite uh, over the Jackets in Atlanta, uh, which, you know, growing up in the South and growing up with Georgia Tech and knowing what Clemson used to be, it still wows me that that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but it is. Um, so, um, so, yeah, I, I was. I was pleased at how well Clemson played, um, and it makes me excited to try and get to this playoff that's off in the horizon. I want to talk about my favorite statistical game of the weekend real quick before we move on, because we got a lot of stuff to cover tonight. Oh, yeah. Kentucky wins a game by 22 points Mm -hmm. with only gaining 157 yards. That is true. Okay. First time ever, Mike Leach's defense has outscored his offense, where – 24-2 24 to 2. 24 to 2 is the final score here. Also true. Mike Leach quarterbacks throw a combined six interceptions. So the question I have, we all go back to week one for the SEC mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. Mississippi State goes to Baton Rouge and everybody flips out because they beat LSU. Correct. Now we've seen LSU lose to Mississippi State mm-hmm. and Missouri. Are we really time? Is it time to start reassessing what we think of this LSU Tiger football team? Because uh, Mississippi State's who I thought they were. That, that, I'm sorry, that's Mike Leach. It is, he is exactly who I thought he was. LSU, on the other hand, is very different. So, yes and no. Um, we need to reassess this LSU team. We also need to reassess, but more so the coaching staff, because I still lay this. I still lay the Mississippi State loss directly on Bo Pelini. Um, because remember, Gary Stingley, should the Mizzou game too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, remember, Derek Stingley is out mm-hmm. for that Mississippi State game, so you need to help out your defense, your secondary, because the best player on the defensive side of the football in college football is out. He's in the hospital for that game. So to look, I don't care if you're DBU. I don't care if. Deion Sanders and Desmond Howard and anybody else that you want have blessed your secondary with the interception magical waters. I don't care. Um, You need to help out your secondary at that point. And at no time did he seem anywhere near interested in helping out a secondary against an air raid offense. How much sense does that make exactly? Um, So I, and then when you – the win over Vanderbilt is the win over Vanderbilt. Now you go to Missouri where Eli Drinkwitz has come out and said, I expected to beat LSU after watching them on film. I expected this to happen. Wow. That's an indictment. That, oh, that's an, wow. Yeah. And Eli doesn't just say words. He's no, no. ball coach um, for anybody that doesn't know Eli Drinkwitz yet. He is a very much um, – very respectful, but he says exactly, you know, 
the way it is. And somebody asked him, did you ever expect this? He said, yeah, no, we prepared to win the ball game. We, we had a feeling we were going to win this ball game. That was a man that was still looking for his first SEC win. And he just looked at the national champions and went, yeah, got that. That's <laughs> us. That's going to be me. You're going to be. I, yep. Mizzou's going to clip someone else this year that uh-huh. they shouldn't clip. Uh-huh. Just like Arkansas is going to get it's Arkansas is going to get upset after what happened on Saturday. No, the the SEC. While people will say, "Oh, the SEC's down because Florida can't play defense and LSU is LSU this year," well, and Auburn is Lord knows whatever that is. Um, the SEC from top to bu- has just gotten a way bunched up because Ole Miss is really good. Mississippi State is what we thought they would be, just kind of there uh, figuring things out. Um, they, it's going to screw up somebody they, Saturday eventually. Exactly, to, which, which yeah. I think that'll come November fourteenth um, in in Jordan Hare or in. Uh, oh, that's that's in Starkville this year in Stark Vegas, um, in front of a full crowd, I'm sure, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with all the cowbells. Um, but you look at Missouri, you look at Arkansas, even South Carolina. I think it's good. I I don't know how I feel about this weekend for them. I think that they're a little bit better than I thought they would be with Mike Bobo's offense. Um, but I think – and then Kentucky – I just, I still don't know what I'm getting with Kentucky from no. week to week. Um, That's an intriguing think, game with Tennessee this week, though. It really is, isn't it? But yeah. I still think Tennessee wins, but yeah, that's a really interesting game. Well, Drew, before we move on to talking about what's coming up this week, there's some big news items that hit today, several of them COVID-related, so we have to start there. Um Started the day finding out that Florida and about half the football team caught COVID. Uh, and well, they went to Texas. That's the best part for me right now is Dan Mullen said, I think we got it in College Station. Just yeah. throw Texas a up under the bus. I think we got it there. Now, my other favorite part of that is remember Dan Mullen on Sunday was like, we need to open up the entire swamp. Because we need loud crowds. If yep. Texas A&M is going to have a 40 or 50% crowd and it'd be loud there, then we need to have the entire swap open. Yeah. Screw everything. And yeah. now half of this football team has the COVID. Um, the worst so, uh, part is, is that he wouldn't walk back that statement even yesterday at uh, his presser. Uh, I, he I got, knows how many cases he's got positive. And got, Homeboy I, still of course, throwing it up. I got nothing to say to that other than no. what the hell, man. Um Okay, so LSU Florida postponed till December. Yep. Um, then which, later on in the day, I'm sorry. Which let let me just do this for you real quick. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up as fast as I yeah, possibly Florida can. Florida had to end the year already. With uh-huh. uh huh, that's exactly where I was going. Weren't they going to play Tennessee at the end of the year or something like that? You ain't wrong. They've got to go. So now that game's at Florida. So they will close with Kentucky at in the swamp at Tennessee, and then LSU at home. I don't care what we just said about LSU. Yeah. That's a rough thing. They still got talent. They still got talent everywhere. And that's it. And remember what happens when you move an LSU game? Do I need to remind you what happens when an LSU game gets moved? Yeah. Yeah. They win some weird way. Uh Uh-huh. They fight with the band breaks out (laughs) with your kicker, and you lose. (laughs) Um, Okay, so that happened. Then we find out Joey Freshwater and yep. some of the boys at Ole Miss. Well, Joey Freshwater is safe, but some of the players at Ole Miss apparently have COVID, and nice. they're on the brink of not having enough to play Saturday at Arkansas. Okay. Okay. By the way, Ole Miss is only a two or three point favorite in that game, even before all this news came out. Uh huh. How uh-huh. that that's that was more my question before all the. Um, all the COVID. I, I was jumping on. Uh huh. Now I'm 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 pumping the brakes until I see what happens and make sure that Matt Corral and some of those wide receivers are a part of this deal. But I still, still a don't. point and a half. Yeah, I. They know something that I don't know. Then. And then late breaking news this afternoon: Nick Saban, yep. uh, and also Bill Byrne, the AD at Alabama. Oh, I didn't Both- know Bill had it. Yeah, he got it too. Yeah. Both of them come down with coronavirus. So Saban will not be coaching on the sidelines this weekend in the single biggest game of the year for the regular season. Um, Steve Sarkeesian will take over as head coach. Sark. 
Yeah, he's, Sark's going to get his shot on the sidelines of Tuscaloosa. Maybe an audition, actually. I'd be so okay with that. All right, down the road, this could be an audition for Sark. This could be. Um, but, man, alive. It, we talked at the beginning of the year. Uh, it seems like the SEC is doing right by waiting and holding some stuff open. Now, and, and a lot of this is out of team's controls. I get it. They're kind of stuck to what the states are going to do or what the campus is going to do, and you can only do so much. Okay, I get it. But what do you do? Because, one, this throws a wrench into the SEC, potentially for scheduling, and this throws a wrench mm-hmm. into um, to win losses, everything. But what do you do looking ahead? Because the Big Ten starts in just a couple of weeks. And the protocols in the Big Ten are so much stricter. Yeah. To the point where if you get like if you have COVID in the Big Ten, it's twenty one day mandatory from the yeah. time you get it. Yeah. So that's minimum three games, potentially four. Mm-hmm. No, it's I heard an interesting um, idea thrown out there where you say um, where you just put going ahead and push it back. Um, just push everything back for two weeks, let everything calm down, get everybody right. Because um, you've played this weekend, obviously. And then you just kind of keep pushing back um, as you need to. Because really and truly, all the dates are arbitrary. Uh, even the college football playoff, there's nothing in the agreement where it says you have to play a national championship Monday, January 12th, or whatever it is. Um, you can push these things back. Um, um, it, it might take a little bit of finagling here or there, um, but nobody is going to tell the SEC, the ACC, or even the Big 12, even at this point, no, if you, you have to be done by the 19th. Or just cut the season short if you have to. You can, yeah. you can, or, you can, cut, yeah. you can cut a couple of games. I was about to say, if or you could do what the Pac-12 did and just knock off a game. You know, let's say uh, the uh, November twenty first, just knock it away. Um, you have to play the twenty. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to do Thanksgiving weekend because those are all of your big rivalry games and everything like that. Um, but you know, or see if see if it lines up to where okay, we'll give everybody a week off. Um, you know, everybody gets bye week. We're going to play the November fourteenth games on December twelfth. Um, you know, if you don't already have a game, if you do, you have to play that week. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm interested to see again, it's whenever all this announced, I, I want to say on one of our first episodes, we both said, prepare yourself. You're not promised 10 games. Yeah. Prepare yourself for less than 10 games, but hope for 10, um, and be prepared for changes this isn't a print out your schedule and you can write it in pen. No, 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 no. This is a make it in pencil and then put them in pen after they're finished playing. Um, so prepare yourself for more changes. Prepare yourself for, hey, we're going to do this instead. Um, think of this more as a rec league schedule instead of a college football schedule. Yeah, I mean, it goes to the – look at the pros this weekend, right? Yeah. So the all are the Broncos – you know me, I'm a big Broncos fan. Yeah. Broncos and Patriots got postponed from last week. They pushed that game to this week. But that domino effect had effects on eight other games Yeah, throughout the, throughout the season. Not, not like on their schedules. Like teams no. had to get games moved around so that all the bye weeks fit correctly. So yeah. now like half the Broncos schedule from the original portion of the year, it's, it's out the window. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, now you're playing different dates and whatever. It's fine. They suck anyway. And we're, we're fighting for a top five draft pick, so it's fine. You're not going to get the no, number one. I can tell you that much. Yeah, your Falcons got that on lockdown. Staying home, baby. God, how bad? Okay, you and I, sidebar. You That's and right. I had talked about going, before all this broke out, to the Falcons-Broncos game this year in Atlanta. Oh. I mean, how much alcohol would we have needed to make it through those three hours? Luckily. Um, <laughs> and we were going to go see Auburn the day before. Don't forget that. We were going to go see Auburn in Arkansas. <laughs> that was the original plan. <laughs> that was our original plan, to go watch Auburn in Arkansas. And all the easy <laughs> And then go watch the Falcons and the Broncos play. <laughs> oh, God. That would have been oh. awful. <laughs> oh. Thank God the Mercedes-Benz oh. Stadium, uh, uh, the Benz, as we affectionately the, call it. At least they have Maker's Mark on tap. The, like, only, thing, 
the only thing I could say to those two games is we could probably get into both of them for free. That would have been about the saving grace. I mean, at this point, you oh, I almost know I have to pay. Auburn. Yeah. Oh, you could walk in. You, they might pay you to go to an Auburn game. Well, even normal years, for the mo- unless it's Bama or Georgia, I could pretty yeah. much go to an Auburn game for free. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, that is very true. Yeah. But yeah, no, and we were going to try to finagle tickets as well for the Falcons, but yeah. Uh, we may have dodged a bullet, man. Well, I, I think Corona <laughs> was trying to tell us something. <laughs> you don't need to watch these football games. You're, you're, you're no, nay, nay, sir. Um, other thing we want to hit on real quick besides Corona and all the impact it's having in college football. The other big announcement today, it uh, looks like it's coming through. The Division I Council is going to allow immediate transfers, mm-hmm. apparently starting next year. So that means – for one time during a college um, player's career, they can transfer for free immediately, play the next year. You don't have to sit out a season. Now, that does not apply to the graduate transfer rule. So if like, you're a graduate transfer, and you graduate and you transfer again, you still have to sit out a second year if you already transferred once. So this is truly okay. a one-time transfer thing, right? Now, if you transfer the second time, then you have to sit out a year. Um, hmm. Drew, this is going to impact, I think, football bigger than most people realize the transfer portal already started that yeah and now you've got kids out there if they're not playing year one year two your recruiting is going to have to be on point every year even more so than it has been it it definitely will be it's you're going to i think it's going to lead to more parity uh absolutely in in college football um i think people are uh it I I hate to say this for for lack of a better term, but uh, I know some of the better programs around college football, the Alabamas, the Georgias, the Clemsons, definitely weren't uh, on the blush that, yeah, we'll support this and everything like that. I think internally this is not what they really wanted just because now I can't – I can recruit to replace, which there's going to be some of that, sure, but – that Blake Fields player, um, you're you're going to see that person really sit down and think. All right, I'm I'm going to take a shot. You're going to see recruiting rankings be. Uh, you're going to yeah. I, I, you're going to have a a bigger industry for the revisited recruiting rankings because you're going to have twenty five five stars sign with Georgia. All right, if I can't play, if I can't cut it, then I get to go to my second choice, the school that I should have signed with the first time. So Georgia, Alabama, Clemson are going to be number one, two, three, and Ohio State number one, two, three, four every year in recruiting, in my opinion, while everything's going like it is. However, we're going to have to sit back and revisit those recruiting rankings two, three, four years down the road and go, well, actually, Auburn got this four-star DB from Georgia and turned him into a quarterback, and now they're winning the national title. Close. Um, But (laughs) other teams are going to have that happen. I just like using that example because it's all I have right now. Yeah, I, I, um, I, oh, good. No, no, that, that, that's. I was gonna say I think of it kind of like basketball. So you see a lot of this in college basketball, where really good players mm-hmm. end up transferring to another school or a smaller school, wherever the case may be, and they'll sit out there a year. Mm-hmm. But when they do transfer and they end up playing because they weren't getting the minutes they thought they should have, sure. and now they're the star on that team. Mm-hmm. And now you've got mid-level college teams in basketball, the Butlers of the world or whoever, right? The Wichita Creighton. States, you know, Murray State a couple of years ago. We had the number mm-hmm. three overall pick in the draft come out, yeah. right? Um, that's, it, it's going to make Sunbelt football better. Mm-hmm. It's, it's going to make the Indianas of the world better. Yep. Um, you know, I think about – I forgot the kid's name, but I, and I, we talk Auburn all the time, but it's what I follow the closest of any team. Sure. There's a five-star quarterback out of uh, the, the most dominant 6A team in Texas high school football. Is mm-hmm. It's North Shore, just north of Dallas. Or one of the Dallas schools. Or not sorry, one of the Houston, Houston. schools. Yeah. yeah, he's in the Houston area. And uh, they won the state title last year. He's a starting quarterback again. He's committed to Auburn. But remember, Bo Nix doesn't lose his year of eligibility this year. So mm-hmm. Bo Nix is still a sophomore next year. How long is that kid going to sit behind Bo Nix if Bo continues to struggle a little bit? And how big are the calls going to be for him to replace Bo? Because just, you don't want him to Justin Fields you and transfer and go to the playoff. 
because I don't know if you know this about Auburn fans, but we're kind of crazy with watching and breaking down film and watching A Day over and over again for no yeah. good reason. Um, so there will be calls to do that, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think an offensive line could help Bo immensely this year. Yeah, me too. But which is why when I kind of chuckle whenever somebody says, yeah, Bo Nix has regressed this year. No, no, no. His offensive line did. And that's why he looks like a, like yeah. a scared kid. Well, and it's fair. There's been injuries and things like that. The first yeah. couple of weeks. I, I can forgive a lot, but still I'm, yeah. I'm only using that as an example of absolutely what could happen. What could happen. Row, right. Absolutely. So, you know, maybe this kid decides I'm going to go back home to Houston and play next year. Yeah. The Eric King opposite. Right. And now yeah. Houston's got talent all over the place because, Oh, by the way, they've got Dana Holgerson coaching. So of course yeah. you want to play for the whole go. Yeah. But well, why wouldn't you want to play for that man? Name that he's oh got? my gosh. And he's only about an hour and a half from Lake Charles, and you know that man loves a casino. I guess. Exactly. Oh man, that if that I've never, Ugh. I've never seen someone that screams Pearl, Mississippi more than <laughs> Dana Holgerson. Never, <laughs> never. I mean, you look at him, and that just screams Ooh. Hollywood Casino. All right, oh. what's what's more depressing? Huh? Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, on, on the casino scale, though, what's more depressing, Pearl or Tunica? Oh, Pearl. Pearl by far. <laughs> far and away. No, I've been to both. And, okay. Um, and by far, uh, don't get me wrong, love me some Pearl, Mississippi, because, huh? <laughs> uh, shout out, Jason. Um, <laughs> but, which, by the way, if you're not going to Pearl, Mississippi, when you go to an Ole Miss football game as a visiting fan, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, because there's that's the things. way to do it. You go to be a degenerate gambler, and then you go there. It's yes. fine. Oh, yeah. and then you go to the Grove for eight hours. Yeah. It's... Um, and watch then you old get men, the... watch old men gawk at the MILF counter as the ladies. Yeah, it, as, it, as literally, there's another one. Um, so, no, uh, it's, it's going to, I think it's going to lead to a lot more questionable recruiting decisions, not, not practices per se, but decisions because we're going to go, why is that kid going to Utah State? Yeah. Why is he, what? Why? Well, because he's got playing time now, and if it really doesn't work out, he can transfer somewhere. That's interesting. I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, he can, he can go. It goes both ways. Yeah. I didn't think of it that way. All right, let's move on to this coming week. Uh, it is a light week when it comes to big-time games. There's the one big one that we'll end up on. That's the last one we want to go the most in-depth on. Uh, so we will start uh, just kind of moving down the list as we do normally from morning to afternoon. Mm-hmm. It is our pick-ems. Uh, we are 14-9-1, and one, each of us this, so far this year. So you're winning if you're with us. Yeah, Last week was bad, folks. Last, last week, uh, I hope you missed it. Drew went one and four. I went zero oh for five, which uh, yeah, that was rough. Um, it was the a golden it was a, sombrero. Oh. Uh, we both still have one upset special correct so far this year, so we will start making our picks now. And we will start, unfortunately, because it's an interesting line. I don't pick it just because it's Auburn. It's only because the line is interesting and intriguing. Tigers minus three at South Carolina, a team that. Hasn't been winning, but South Carolina putting up some points and making games interesting. So much like I said last week um, in my uh, article online, which if you uh, go to College Magnolia, you can read some of my hilarity in football season. Um, I said, on paper, Auburn has the talent to win this game. I wouldn't be shocked if it was close, uh, which it was. And it was closer than close. Auburn should have lost. Yeah. Um, South Carolina to me, South Carolina to me is more talented than Arkansas. I don't know if Will Muschamp gets as much as the pit boss gets out of Arkansas right now. Um, and that's, that gives me some pause as to going uh, to where I want to go. I don't see Auburn improving. Um, I think it benefits Auburn to actually play earlier in the day. Um, just just because it's a road game, going ahead and get it out of the way. Um, I am actually going to uh, make this my upset special. Um, okay. I'll, I'll go on ahead and do it. Um, I don't think Auburn wins this game. I, I think that, uh, sure, Gus could rally the troops and get it done. I actually think 
South Carolina plays a little bit better than uh, a lot better than I thought they would under Mike Bobo. Um, the only thing that gives me pause is Colin Hill's knee um, because I know at some point that thing's going to break wide open. Um, and I'm interested to see how Ryan uh, Alinsky does in a backup role. I know he can play. Uh, I just don't know if he can play under Mike Bobo's offense. So um, I just don't like what I'm seeing at all from this Auburn team. This is not a sour grapes or a, you know, I want Gus gone because I know that that's not going to happen this year uh, just from what I know about Auburn. Um, but I, I think that this will be the first time since Hitler was chancellor that <laughs> South Carolina beats Auburn. Folks, that's not a joke. South Carolina has not, not a joke. South Carolina has not beaten Auburn since 1933. That only spans about seven or eight games. They haven't played that often, but it's still one of my favorite things to yes, throw at and, South Carolina and, fans. And uh, just so, just so for all you history uh, minors like me, Hitler was named chancellor of uh, of Germany, I believe, in 1933. He was yep. he had not taken over the presidency just yet, so this was even before that. Um, I'm actually against you. I'm going to take Auburn yep. minus three, and uh, it's not a bad pick. No, no, no. It, and here's why I say this, and it's not the Homer or the Auburn no. and anything like that. Um, Auburn, they played like crap last week, first and foremost. They absolutely played like crap last week against a team they are far more talented than. Um, however, there were a lot of injuries for the Tigers last week. Sure. They, sure. they missed starting running back was out, and they may have found a new Ryan. starting running back in Tank. I think they did. In Tank William. Or, uh, yeah, Tank Bigsby. Uh, Bigsby, sorry. Tank's unbelievable. But Sean Shiver is supposed to be back this week. Um, the diminutive running back with all the speed in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, looks like Eli Stove's going to be back on the wide out spot to give you that third true wide out to go with Schwartz and Seth Williams. Big Cat Bryant was out last week, mm-hmm. also starting corners for Auburn. Um, so there's four or five starters on both sides of the ball that will be coming back. Mm-hmm. I also think Auburn found a run game last week with Bigsby. Um, it was somewhat inconsistent. But they actually got movement on the line of scrimmage for the first time really all year. Um, And I haven't seen enough out of South Carolina's defense to make me think they can't do that again. So this is one of those Gus specials to me where he comes out of nowhere, kind of like 2016 A&M where you just – or 2015 A&M where you're just giving up on Auburn and then all of a sudden they're up up 22 to – the five, uh, 22 to seven at the half. And you're like, what the hell just happened here? Birmingham ball. Um, here we come. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I think that kind of game is going to happen. Um, I think Tigers win by at least a touchdown okay. and uh, get the victory over South Carolina this week. Again, so not, not a bad pick at all. Uh, I could definitely see that. happen. Next game that I want to talk about, because I find this game wholly fascinating. We remember the troll job from two weeks ago where Tulsa, Asked where the bounce house was. Mm-hmm. Now they go back home and they get the number eight ranked team in the country. The Cincinnati Bearcats come into town. Yep. Cincinnati's only a three point favorite here, Drew. Yep. Who you like? I will take Luke Fickle and the Bearcats to go, to go large. Um, I, I like this Tulsa defense. They, held Oklahoma State uh, to literally nothing uh, throughout the game. Offense really didn't show me anything. They did what they did to Central Florida, which was a very impressive uh, W on the road. However, I love the way Luke Fickle has the Bearcats playing over the past couple of years. This is a very underrated, and I even hate to say mid – mid-american this, this team would be in the middle of the big 10 right now yep this they, team, they, this team yeah. is better than purdue indiana uh, i don't know about indiana indiana is actually Indiana's not good bad yeah cincinnati beats, cincinnati beats. northwestern yes you yeah. know yeah, maybe nebraska right now i would actually argue rutgers oh, for that's sure a, oh yeah. yeah uh maryland maybe uh yeah, i think they'd beat maryland i think they'd beat maryland yeah. Um, but, uh, but no, this would, th- you're talking about a team that's probably going to the Alamo bowl if they're playing in the big 10, yeah. um, for sure. Um, well, that tie-in doesn't happen anymore. It's oh, it sad. doesn't? No, the Alamo bowl is the PAC 12 and the big 12 now. Oh, don't like that. No, yeah. 
no, don't like that. Yeah. Um, no, it needs to be. That's a Purdue bowl game. <laughs> that is Purdue. <laughs> that is mid two thousands, late nineties Purdue. <laughs> Just what it oh, is. I'm with you. I like Cincinnati here. Um, I feel like I'm being stupid betting against Tulsa again because I did that once and they burned me. Um, but I feel like that's probably me two years in a row now having way too much faith in UCF. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think that's more UCF burning you than yeah. Burning. So I guess at least three times UCF has burned me in the last 12 months. Yep. So I'm going to take Cincinnati on the road. I yep. like, I love Luke Fickle. I, love um, I, I love think if there's, style. if there's a major school looking for a coach and you're not looking at Luke Fickle as your first stop, you're stupid. Uh, I, see you, I see you pointing, and I'm right there with you. Have been for a couple of years. Uh huh. Um, I think Cincinnati goes and wins this by double digits yeah, against Tulsa. I can see that. I can see that as well. All right, next game on the pick'em list. Another kind of mid-tier game, but with a very intriguing line. We talked about the bounce house. They're going to go on the road to the Liberty Bowl. Ooh. UCF at Memphis. And the Knights are a three and a half point favorite. This is a loser, like this is old school pro wrestling, isn't it? This is. I mean, like I feel loser. like Jerry Lawler is. Yeah, this uh-huh. is loser leaves town. Andy Kaufman in a UCF outfit yeah. showing up. Yeah. Uh-huh. Gotta have no, th- this is because literally you're looking at a two and one UCF team and a one and one Memphis team that has been uh, that has battled the COVID and just now coming out of the woods. <laughs> um, I. <laughs> Josh Heupel's good for two losses a year, in my opinion, just at UCF. He's just good for two losses. It, it, it is what it is. It's not a bad thing to be because you're UCF. Like, you don't have to play for a national title yeah. every year. Um, I've got to think. I don't know if it'll come in back-to-back games. Um, I kind of like Memphis here. Um, I, it's just a feeling that I have. I like them playing at home. They're rested for sure. Um, and I, I, I'm interested, I guess the thing that's pushing me over the side is I think UCF will be hurt still by the, I think Tulsa might beat them twice is where I'm going. So this is one of those games when I'm thinking about how I'd want to play it at the casino. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the line is this close, and I think Memphis is going to win or has a really good shot at winning, screw the line, give me the money line. I'll take the plus 150 odds yeah. or the 140 yeah. odds, whatever the case is, instead of the sure. minus 110s on the three and a half points. Because the three and a half don't mean that much to me yeah. at that point. I'm with you. And, and, and I know transitive properties don't work, and it's not how you're supposed to analyze football, right? No, 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 no. Tulsa's better. Tulsa beat UCF. Yeah. Memphis is a better football team than Tulsa. Correct. Their only loss was at the buzzer on the road to SMU. And yeah. SMU, pretty freaking good this year if you haven't been paying attention. Yeah, they are. That game's in the Liberty Bowl, which I understand home field doesn't mean as much this year, but Not still. It's still, still something. I. You still have to get on a plane. You still have to stay in a hotel overnight that you're not used to. Just everything's a little out of routine. Yeah. I like the Memphis Tigers straight up. I I, I could totally see that. Um, I, I'm fine to make that another upset special. Um, I, I know I can only pick one, and I've already yeah. picked all for, uh, South Carolina. But I could definitely, if I were going to play money on that game, that's the way I would go. Money line with uh, with Memphis. Not a pick 'em game, but an interesting game on Friday night that I want to talk about. Sure, talk about the whole go, baby. Week night oh. football down in Houston, where the Cougars host the Cougars. Yeah, BYU, no. BYU's coming to town to it, take on, and BYU been playing really good football until last week, where they struggled to get out with a seven point victory at home in Provo. Now they hit the road for just the second time this year. First time they've gone on the road since they mm-hmm. waxed Navy on Labor Day night in the no tackle football game that Navy played. Yeah. Houston got down twenty four to seven early last week to Tulane, mm-hmm. and then their offense woke up and decided to remember how to play football. After now, granted, they had what five games postponed because of COVID that really related yeah. reasons, and none of them were their fault. Every single game was the other team's fault for screwing yep. up. Yeah, um, Houston's a five and a half point dog at home, man. I I could really, 
this it, this one will be one that I watch along with SMU and Tulane because I I really like watching SMU play football. Um, which that's the first time since 1980 that that's ever been said. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, this is a this is a baffling game. Like this is a this is a thought provoking game, and this is or is not on our pick'em. It is not. Good. Um, no, I'm it, fired up for this game. I uh, th- in that case, this is my upset special. Oh, there it is. Give me the home team, baby, Houston. Oh, boy, you straight up. Add a boy. Love the Cougars in this game. I I, I can't disagree. I cannot I, disagree. I, I, now, what's going to be fun? BYU's offensive line is incredibly impressive. Yes. Houston's defense, eh, not fine. so great. Like, the the over under is only 64 here, and I feel like that's going to get blown to hell in high water. Uh huh. Um, but I actually, love it's, Actually, it's heck. We were talking about BYU. Oh, it's sorry. Heck. Sorry. Heck. Well, they're going on the road, though. I mean, they are going to a oh, city okay. that allows that allows booze. So, well, know, that's and, and, and caffeine. So, well, as long as they wear their special underwear. <laughs> um, another game not on the pick'em list, but we want to talk about sneaky rivalry game. If you're not familiar with the SEC, Kentucky on the road at Tennessee. Rivalry in the respect of they're bordered and they 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 go back a long way. They both like checkerboards. But also rivalry in the respect of a hammer and a nail in the history for football, basketball, other way. But they're sure. two schools that flat don't like each other as yeah. well. No, this is this is more of, um, you know, if you're an Auburn person, this is closer to Auburn, Alabama than it is uh, Auburn, Georgia. Yeah, um, they don't like each other. Yeah, no, they, they just plain don't like each other. Um, so I – I have a vested interest in this game just because I live here. So it's the game that I've talked about the most uh, with people at work and everything like that. I think Tennessee gets this win uh, personally. Um, I, I, it concerns me that Kentucky only gained 157 yards of offense last week, Mm -hmm. even though they won, it's still concerning because Georgia's defense is a little bit better than Mississippi state's in my estimation. Um, and again, I, know I feel like that's can't. a fair assessment to make. I, I, this is a fair assessment. Um, I want to see what Jer- uh, what uh, uh, guaranteed throws a uh, pick six uh, <laughs> uh, does after the Georgia game uh, this past week. Um, so I want to see how that bounce back is. Or if Tennessee, uh, I've heard rumors that Tennessee opened up everything this past week and just said, let's play. Um, so I'm interested to see if that really is what happened, uh, and we might see some other player, uh, you know, somebody up under center for Tennessee other than Jared Garantano. Um, so if that happens, I think Tennessee kind of walks away with this one just because I'm not that I'm not that impressed. Kentucky had to win last week because from yeah. here on it just gets it's rough for him. Yeah, I, I feel like the six is too small of a line. Mm-hmm. I, I think Tennessee, unless they have a hangover from last week where they put everything sure. into the Georgia game. Sure. I just feel like the six is way too small here. Tennessee at home, this feels 10, 14 points, somewhere in that range to me. Um, I like Kentucky. I, I, I love what mm-hmm. Mark Stoops has done up Absolutely. there. I really do. But this is this is a bad matchup for them. Yeah. Um, one of the games I want to talk about for our final two pick real quick, it's a sneaky game on the ACC Network at night. Boston College on the road after the big win against Pitt last week, taking on a physical Virginia Tech team at, in Blacksburg. Mm-hmm. Virginia Tech, I think, is a two-score favorite in this ball game. Uh, yep. Twelve points is the yep. line. Now Virginia Tech lost by eleven last week at North Carolina, but I mentioned mm-hmm. that earlier. They kept coming back, and you got to remember they were down about twenty players due to COVID, mm-hmm. something like that. Something Their right. offensive line, holy hell, is it fun to watch? Mo- this game is road be graders, a mouth football game. No, this is going to be a heck of a ball game. Um, Boston College is playing way above their talent level right now, in my from what I've seen of them. Um, and Virginia Tech needs to have that bounce back game. They were riding high after beating NC State, and uh, and with literally the student managers and a couple of other kids um, from around campus. Um, 
And and then they kind of got popped on the head by Mac Brown and the boys uh, uh, up in Chapel Hill. So I'm I'm interested to see this one. Um, I, I would not be shocked if Boston College walks out of here with a win, uh, though. There's something about it. Something tells me that the Eagles. Um, I mean, that would be an upset special, but just something about it. Um, I love that Virginia Tech offensive line. If they get rolling, it's all over. But just the way Boston College has come out and handled their business, they're three and one on the year. Boston College. Matt Ryan's not the quarterback. Yeah. I, this is a good Boston College football team, which I can't believe I'm saying. I think BC, I, I don't know that they win. I'm taking the 12 points and running. Oh, yeah. No, I am running that. with the 12 points. Yes. Um, I think this is going to be a lower scoring game than most people think. I think the line's around 61, 62 right now. 60 Take under. Take the under. Yeah. Take um, the under. This feels like a 28, 24 type football game. I can see that. Um, but. I love this matchup, and uh-huh. I'll have an eye on it. That that's my secondary game Saturday night, uh, as opposed to Your Georgia commercial, the yeah. commercial game. Well, the iPad game. Like I've got one uh, on the iPad, one on the one on the TV, yeah. right? So yeah. we'll have it I going gotcha. there. Two games we want to talk about left before we finish up here, Drew. We'll make this first mm-hmm. one quick so we can go more in depth on the second sure. one. Uh, you mentioned Mac Brown. The Tar Heels go on the road, put their number five ranking on the line against an FSU team. That played pretty decently at Notre Dame last week. FSU goes back home. They're 13 point dogs at Doak. Uh, until proven otherwise, I need to see it two weeks in a row before I start to really believe that something's happening. Um, so give me North Carolina and I'll give you the points. I am opposite. I want the po- I want the points with FSU. At home, uh, that's a big number to lay at home. It's it's not just the the point that they're at home. It's the fact that I don't trust North Carolina's defense. After watching them last week, I can't argue with you. I, I don't trust their defense at all. Yeah. And FSU, if they figured some things out on offense. It's, I think they found a quarterback for sure. Especially with benching Blackman. Mm-hmm. And they may that have found a quarterback cool. that can run the, that, that's going to run the system the way that Norval wants it run. Or at least I, I got nothing against Blackman. He just – he, he was not a, a good he, young man. He's not a he's, fit for that offense right no, now. No. Uh, I like FSU here, and I am not going to be shocked if they win this football game, Drew. Ooh. Wow, they did uh, show you something last uh-huh. week. Okay. Okay. I think and it's partially because I think that highly of Notre Dame right now. Okay. So, um, last game, it's the big one. We've been holding it off on purpose so we can go more in depth. We go to Tuscaloosa with the number three Georgia Bulldogs take on the number two Alabama Crimson Tide. Sands Nick Saban no not going to be in attendance with COVID uh, issues happening. Uh, so Sark will be on the sidelines with the headsets. It's a four-point spread right now. And we're recording this on Wednesday night, so the spread mm-hmm. could easily change by the time this gets to kickoff, folks. Oh, yeah. Um, <sighs> yeah where obviously, obviously, today's news changed, changed some things a little bit. I mean, when Frodo goes to the top of Mount Doom to throw the ring in, <laughs> not going to be in his for the game. I don't know what to say. Um, it, it, I'm actually going to go on ahead and say that things get kind of squirrely. Um, so I really take this – I really do sit and think that this is going to be a revenge game. Um, I, I think that uh, Kirby wants to go back and, and show that – it's also a way for Nick to lose without losing to his assistant. Yeah. I mean, can you really claim that win? That becomes can you really question. claim this win? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to take Georgia. Um, I, because don't get me wrong, before this, and uh, again, I was talking to a mutual friend of ours, and I said, you know, you've got to be 14 points better than Alabama when you play in Tuscaloosa. When they're right, when they're not right, you you can win ball games. Auburn's proven that. And right now, Alabama's not completely right without the head, the the head elephant. So there. I'm I'm opposite of you. Okay. Until someone in the SEC, that's until somebody out in Clemson really can show me that it doesn't take a Herculean effort with every break going your way to beat Alabama on any mm-hmm. field, on no. any field, any field. I'm not picking against them. And you're not wrong uh, to do it that way. Um, I, 
the only reason why I am is this is the first time since Mike Shula roamed the sidelines that Alabama won't have Nick Saban rolling around there and yelling yeah, at people. I, I, I get it. Butt. I get it. And I have seen plenty of guys wear that HC headset and muck it up. I, I, I somewhat think it's going to be galvanizing for the team. It could Saturday. be. You might be absolutely uh, right. I, I also still think that highly of Mac Jones and that offense. And Najee Very Harris true. is a beast. Oh, my God, Najee Harris. Mm-hmm. You're unbelievable. Yes, um, you are. And also, you killed me Saturday instead of taking the knee at the five and scoring that touchdown at the end of the game yeah. um, and just running the clock out. <sighs> half-time, yeah. half-time live spreads. <sighs> Kill you. Um, but I, I think people forget. Yeah, Bama lost twice last year. Okay, let, let's analyze those losses real Look quick. Look at those losses. Okay. First one, LSU got up, and LSU didn't have a problem moving the ball. But they also needed a fumbled snap on the kick, uh, flat out to a, just dropping the ball when he was running with nobody around him. Plus, a of, Tua, Tua was banged up in that game. A lot of weird stuff happened in that football game, and Bama lost by five. Yeah. Five. They didn't get to blown eventual, out. To the eventual national champions. To, to eventually the team that I think may be the best college football game team I have ever seen, at least on yeah. offense. At, at least, least on offensive. Offense. Yeah. Like, I don't know necessarily that I think they're better than 92 Bama or 95 Nebraska, Nebraska 95, yeah. 96 Nebraska, that range. I don't yeah. know if they're better than those. But they're damn good. But that offense. Whew, Ooh. Ooh. But let's go back to the other game Bama lost last year. Mm-hmm. Auburn. Two pick sixes. One of them was a sailed pass on... Okay, that's on Mac. The one bad pass that Mac yeah. Jones has thrown so far. The other one was thrown off the receiver's ass, and it just happened to bounce into the Auburn defender's arm. Oh, and by the way, there was the field goal right before the half that, that under rules forget. this year, that under this year rules wouldn't mm-hmm. happen. And oh, by the way, you had a missed 30-yard field goal by Bama with two minutes to go, clanked off the upright. And oh, oh, by, the way, oh by the way, the game ended because Auburn somehow tricked Bama into having too many men on the field on the substitution play, right? I don't, Which, don't get me wrong, guys. I still laugh at. Still hilarious. Yeah. I laughed, and it's funny, but I, I make the point. You. I say all this to make the point of it takes insane stuff to beat them. Yeah. The only team that has waxed them in the last five years has been Clemson, mm-hmm. where they just flat out manned up and beat them. Yeah. Play so... And actually, I would say Auburn did it in 2017. That is true. Auburn did it in 2017. That was 12. That was a game that that was not fluky. No, but Auburn would have won that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I now, but I will say, Jalen Hurts was injured that game. He was not at 100 percent going into no. that football game. No, right. So there's still some things in that football game. I'm like, yeah, okay. Other than that, they don't get beat. No, especially. I, I just think they're still too damn good, especially on offense. And I know how good Georgia is on defense. Mm-hmm. I really and truly do. I, and I, I respect I, it. Yeah. But I don't think Bam, I don't think they lose. They go in in Tuscaloosa and do this. Bama by seven. Uh, oof. Wow. <laughs> um, I, and I could definitely see that. I think this is a one score game either way. Um, I just think after. I think that, that uh, the real interesting thing, people are going to talk about, oh, I can't wait to see Alabama's offense against Georgia's defense. No, forget that crap. I want to see Georgia's offense against Alabama's defense because if I get the defense that was in Oxford last weekend, which I don't think I will, nah. but if I get that defense, well, the mailman's going to take care of that business. Agreed, but here's the other catch. You also aren't playing a play caller like Lane Kiffin. Correct. You're playing Todd Munkin, which I still don't know what to think about. I don't either. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Putting up 41 against Tennessee is not not bad. Not not a bad way to be. Putting up 27 against Kevin Steele, not bad. Not a bad way to be. Struggling a little bit with Arkansas doesn't look that bad now. Um, now that they've gotten a little, now that we know what that sample size looks like. Um, and then you still put up what 34. Yeah. 
So this is an offense that has scored 34, 27, and 41. Well, wait, 44. the offense didn't put up 34 against Arkansas. That's true. That's true. There was a pick six in there and a couple yeah. of short fields. Like, and, eh, that's... and against Tennessee, the same thing could be said. Yeah. Uh, I think two, 14 points. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, it's, it's going to be one of those things of, I can't wait to see that matchup. Because that matchup is going to decide the game, in my opinion. I just don't think they can score enough to keep up with Bama. Bama has a better Bama has a better chance of scoring on Georgia than Georgia has a square chance of scoring on Bama. That's the way I look at this football game. Yeah, and I mean you're not wrong um, because I, I mean again, don't don't write me down in stone until we go off the air because I'm still processing like what does Nick Saban being out really truly mean um, as far as an X's and O's because. Nick does do the one thing that I wish the school across the state would figure out. He somewhat gets out of the way mm-hmm. and lets his assistants do their job. He takes care of the crap, the rat poison, as he says. And, and here's the deal. I think we sometimes forget, and people are going to say, well, Sarkeesian's on the sideline. It's not Nick. Sarkeesian had the USC job. Yeah. Before, he, this isn't his first all, Well, I don't think he ever coached a game, right? Did he? Did he ever coach a game yes. before? Yes, okay, did. sorry. He, yeah, he he, I think it was maybe a season. season so. Yeah, before he everything was went down. A season before, <clears throat> got a little tipsy. He's not, and he was spent so much time in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So it's not like the guy doesn't know what he's looking at, correct, or how to handle a football game. And there's enough distance between the epicenter of him leaving USC, being let go by USC to now because he's been with the Falcons for a little while uh, after um, Kyle Shanahan left um, and then came back to Alabama after that was a failed attempt under Dan Quinn, which what else is new? Um, (laughs) So I don't think there's going to be that much of a drop off. You you've kind of swayed me as we've been talking. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think it's a little bit closer than seven points. I, I think it might be four-ish. Well, that's um, the line. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's true. The line right now. Um, I, I think that this is probably a dead-on line. Then um, I wouldn't be shocked if Georgia won, but I'm gonna. I'm. I'm like you. I, I will stick with what I know and what I've seen in Alabama. So then you um, change your pick to Bama. Yes, I'm gonna. I'm gonna swap over and I'm gonna go back to Bama. All right, so that'll wrap it up as uh, Drew decides to uh, welch on his initial pick. <laughs> In this election season, I will waffle. Uh, America. So we'll make those changes. Folks, thanks so much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at FOT Podcast. Same on Instagram at FOT Podcast. Uh, you can make sure to like and subscribe by searching YouTube for Friends of the Program. And we are also, you can follow, like, and subscribe on iTunes and uh, Spotify. For Drew McCracken, I'm Brad Tillery saying thanks so much for joining us. We always appreciate the time. We always appreciate you having a drink with us, even this crappy swill water that I decided to pour tonight. I'm jealous of what you got there, my friend. It is. And uh, (laughs) we'll be back in a week to talk more about it. Make sure you follow us on the weekends as well online because uh, we are always posting about things we see during the football day any crazy plays that might happen events whatever the case may be we're usually out there making comments or you know in between throwing stuff at the tv while auburn can't play football (laughs) or pouring another drink that'll wrap it up take care everybody bye